Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet once again. And with every sense of humility and purpose, this very evening, morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are domiciled, depending on where you're listening to us from, we welcome you to another expository, explosive, incisive, educative, and informative installment of another presentation on this glorious platform, Radio Biafra, transmitting to the entirety of humanity, regardless of where you are. It is my belief that you are listening to us this very evening. It doesn't matter where you are. We are simulcasting on satellite, we are on FM, we are on IPOB Community Radio, we are on Radio Biafra, we are on tuning. As a matter of fact, if you wish to participate in this very program this evening, it is very easy. Ask your friends, ask your neighbors, the whole world is listening. If you go to Abuja right now, there is an airy silence. All those that think that they matter, they are all listening to Radio Biafra. Some are hiding in their garages, in their cars, they are listening. People are listening in all manner of places at this very moment in time. Therefore, I say good morning to all of you, even those who are hiding and listening to us. I say good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. We are not like any other. We are exceptional. We are supremely gifted. We are ordained by heaven to preach this gospel of redemption to the children of men. That freedom may come in our time. My name is Enam Dekano. I am the leader of the largest mass movement on the face of this very planet, the indigenous people of Biafra, IPUB. I also happen to be the director of Radio Biafra and Biafra Television, but above all, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Wherever you are, it is my pleasure. I welcome each and every one of you. And as always, and without hesitation, I will make sure that this very program this evening permeates even the brains and the skulls of those who are hard at hearing, those who are impervious to reason, this very evening we shall do that which is right before God Almighty in heaven and the children of men on this very earth. I have come to preach the gospel of heaven itself. And this evening we are going to pray. As we always do on this glorious platform, we are going to call upon the Most High to do that which man is incapable of doing. Without further hesitation, we are going to pray. After praying, we are going to preach this gospel as given to us by heaven itself. And after that, I do believe that the end of this very program, this very evening, morning, afternoon, night, depending on where you are, you will gain a greater insight into the intent of those running the damnable zoological republic, what they intend to do to us, and what we are going to do in our capacity as human beings to make sure that they do not succeed. If you have not asked your friends to join us, please try and do so. We are also live on Facebook. Despite all their shenanigans, despite all their efforts to try to delay, to sabotage our broadcast this very evening, we are live on that very platform. It doesn't matter what they do. My happiness this very day is that the whole world is listening and that very position we adopted from the word go resilience determination and never say die attitude is what is now resonating right across the length and breadth of that british contraption the damnable zoological republic let us pray and i will pray in the language of heaven the very oldest language on this very earth the language of the ancients those that knew God before any other being managed to do so, the very center of this very earth, 
the blessed land of Biafra. Chine ke nanke pru minjeri ne chiko ki kabe mo bonyani ne fana uisi alanye. Oje na den soma rumbe bige bi mo inhe jatu njere gi. E karere inha se ne obo mo tutu me hinya maabal. Ni hinu mo yo nyonge ke amato suno biya yiri. Idio mi mi we kari ango tanke mo dendo. No bo na ne gi bonyani ne fana uisi alanya ne ge farosi. I hope like I'm not face of bed and gossip. Nihin up on a good chinek and gossip in Kendiaga. Lay no luck against the bed and gossip. A call be a cambari when a gossip. Or pose all young like I guess we are jagging my way to you. Where fair of fen and care bread and gossip. Key where quotanezi and ezia. Nana don't need room. Where to one hidden and can you bone one in a chinek and ask you be covered on you where for a wall. Key that you were chani run digging in a bundle when to pass you. Nihin anya wogo nyo avlo, boge mmade dendo kanjiji wena anya isi. Obo nana ye kaiji wena anya isi eze bede ngosin. Nihi, ni pete mansu, anye ba anopwa ahu mmade dendo na wana wana nke bede ngosin. Mwana kwa do kunso kena dendo marum bebi. Nihi, ni isi na mba echi kata na sunu ebe, nani po kogi ni me mwone ezi yoku. Anye we ba kwa re ni luge eze bede ngosin. Nihi ga zanye ebele. Nihi ge sina kandi na kwa wanyi we wese gomore. Obe ebele aka ine, beni hun wani ine eze bede ngosin. Nihi nika ebe ki hene we mo kunso nke gi. Ina mo eki mwa dendo na nke bre dengo zikama na gyo mo ki buti ne kena. Oni na digre marom gwe bige bichi. Takwa na ndi bo ne tu gwe bige bina nke bre dengo zik. Ige kwe ni hime hiani. Ige kwe ni hina ni kuro kuo no na dengo mama buste na prama gwa mo bichi chwe gare punde ge. Ni hine buti ne kena na nke bre dengo zik. Obo na ndi bo ni na bo aram me hiani. Oni ne chigi ni ureze bre dengo zik. Juani ni ne na nki gwe bi koni ki gwe mera ni amaro ba aram ni mbe. Na ye chiga te wa zine be no. Omo ki chos on kanyi ne fe wena ku isela nye wezu ka geze bede nko se. Omo ki onyo an zanyi sinon biya beze wezu ka gen nan kende nso. Akwa anyi na mo omo aka we ba ha chi beze. No bo nan ni ki beze ka sinye ni ne lu. Nan ke bele bi konu. Omo ki onyo blan kanyi ne ngomi. No bo bele kanyi ne bele geze bede nko se. Ni hi no bo nan ni ki bo chine ke na. Vo ne ki wera ro chuku nan kende nso. Wwe si kandi wwe wwe fegi ni me mwone ezi yoku. Ani wwe na koku ni me mwone ezi yoku no pochin keta. Na ryo gisi onyo bo nani yana achi. Oni keni neno na badara ke yana nke bre dengo se biko bia ki wwe napta biafra. No nundi yo kwen sundi yo jo chichiri. Ki nye yi wwe mo bane banyo no. Ki lu yi wwe chane banyo no. Ko wani ne wwe sine ziye ne ziye no mo biafra bu mu chineke. Oh, Busi, ten here a barman keep with the mass and kick a mini man drum upon the Biafra. Go one day, go where Sinezi and Ezi and Akina cannot enter my room, baby. Oh, none of the kind of when I jam and William chose a way to go again. Oh, you're not going to be selling him over again. Oh, you're going to have a lot of sap, crap, and can you never think and care bread and go see? Nee, he never more. A boy and madhon and care bread and go over and go to Chinakin and kept from me. Oh, yes, up to Randy and all boosting a line, Egypt and care bread and go see. Oh, yes, in Israel, like I'll be all zone. I think 48 is ever better than go because we're going to one young one. Oh, you're going to be a Chinakin, a big co, man, and you're better. Can you have a weapon and bring Kanye? Can you wear Jack and Mamato? My goes your hands on your bully, and you're going to be selling. Where are my room when you need to be dog? He said, He said, He said, Oh, what is really where the language of heaven? If you go to heaven right now, the angels, as always, have surrounded the throne of the Most High and they are bowing down before Him and saying that He is holy. And they are doing all of that in Igbo language. The language of the ancients in the Igbo, the oldest people on the face of this very earth. And I say so without any apologies to anybody. The truth must be spoken. If prayers can be said in Latin in those days in Roman Catholicism, there is no way we would not say prayers to the Almighty in the very language that the angels use in heaven itself. If you don't have your pen and paper ready, please, I ask you to try to do so. Janjawi Dalamajri. Alamajri from the foothills of Putajalon, please try and bring your slate and your chalk with you because this lecture this evening is for everybody. I want to, to listen as always very attentively to what we have to say. In Nigeria, the great zoological republic created by the British. I'm going to be as slow as possible this evening so that people can digest what we're saying. There is a grazing law in Nigeria, or should I say anti-grazing law. 
And the question that I want each and every one of us listening this evening, morning, afternoon, and depending on where you are to ponder is this. Why is that law not being enforced? Do you know the funniest thing about this very anti-grazing law is that this law came into existence at the height of the war of Biafra and Nigeria. So nobody could possibly accuse the judge that delivered the ruling of any bias. It's also something called thought law, where I think it's T-O-R-T. I'm not a lawyer, but I, do, I did an elective course in law in those days at now London Metropolitan University. There's something called thought law. Thought law is a law that even a mad person ought to know about. Let me give you a very simple example this evening for us to properly put into context what is happening in the zoo between law-abiding citizens and uh, Fulani killer headsmen. I want to put it to you this way. You are a businessman or maybe you are a homeowner. You are a father or you are a mother and you have children and you have a house or a home. And one morning, I decided to come to your house to take your pot of soup or your pot of stew or your pot of rice or beans or a wedu or whatever it is without your permission or consent. What are you expected to do under such circumstance? This is the food you have been cooking to feed your children. All of a sudden, this stranger walks into your home and decides to make away with your pot of soup. What are you expected to do? Now, some people who are not educated, some people who are very foolish in their disposition, some people who are not, should I say, intelligent enough to reason through natural law and justice, will say, oh, but there is no law guiding somebody stealing your pot of soup. Now, let me ask you, is there any law in Nigeria, um, you know, against, or should I say, with any definite pronouncement on what should happen when somebody steals a pot of rice? For instance, is there any law in Nigeria that says when somebody comes to steal your pot of rice or pot of stew, this is what you're going to do? There is no law, but it's common sense. That is why it's called thought law. It's common sense. You should know that trespassing is evil. Do you know the funniest thing? The Fulanese, they knew about all of this. Very many years they've been planning to conquer each and every one of you without you knowing. It's a very stealthy, very subtle, um, should I say, um, approach, subterfuge. You will not know. They, they dangle one thing in front of you, maybe ethnicity or tribe or religion, as you're looking at it and hyperventilating, they are busy advancing their cause, which is this remorseless and relentless march to the Atlantic Ocean. Understand this very well. I will ask you again, go and check every written law or unwritten law in Nigeria. Is there any law that says I cannot steal your pot of soup? So, because there is no law that specifically says you should not steal anybody's pot of soup or pot of um, uh, or, or, or a wedu or maybe uh, 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 gari outside, then I should go and take it. And if I come to your house trying to carry something to steal your food items in your house or take it without your consent, what are you expected to do? The same thing applies to the law of trespass. It's called trespass. You are a farmer. You know, the funniest thing is that there was somebody, he was selling beer in, in Kanu. He was doing business in Kanu. This Hizba police um, raided his business premises and destroyed millions of naira worth of beverage. Because beer is beverage after all, if you don't know. It's beverage. They destroyed it. They said they were enforcing his bar, or should I say Islamic Sharia law in Kano. This man now returned to Isikwato and decided to go into farming. Having destroyed his livelihood in Kano, now the same Fulani headsman came to Isikwato, went into his farm and destroyed his farm produce. What do you expect such people to do? Because I'm saying all of these things for the whole world to understand where our anger is stemming from. We hate injustice. There is palpable, or should I say, ingrained injustice in Nigeria. There is something wrong with that very place. And that is what we are seeking to correct. Nothing more, nothing less. That there is injustice. 
They try to 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 camouflage it. They try to 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 I don't know how to put it. They try to sweep all these very thorny issues under the carpet. They think everybody is as stupid as they have rendered Hausa people. But we are not stupid. We are not daft. We are not useless. There is anti-grazing law in Nigeria. My question this evening is, why is it that the Fulani people who are ruling the zoo, why are they ignoring this very law that exists? Because Nigeria is a lawless country, that's why I call it a zoo. Tell me why a government should not obey the law. They have an attorney general who is a Fulani man. He could have advised them that there is a law in Nigeria banning the movement of cattle from one place to another, but he will not tell them because he, he himself is part of the wider Fulani Janjaweed agenda to try and conquer people who are daft enough not to understand their game plan. I want all of you to understand what I'm saying this evening very, very clearly. Understand me. It's because their intention is to conquer. They are not coming with AK-47 initially. They never came with it. They never came with any bombs. No, no, no. They came with cattle. And some of you may be wondering, how can people use cattle as an instrument of conquest? But that was the grand design of the Fulani, encouraged, of course, by the British, to come into our land with cattle. Claiming, oh, we have come to our cattle is in the bush. Oh, you cannot move them from there. Uh, one or two months, they start to build that they are around the hut. You have seen the one that we are demolishing in a police state. Or they are around the hut uh, and in Abia. And after a while, they have a uh, Sariki, Sariki Ofa or, or Sariki Iza. And in the next 50 years, you're gone. And I keep saying this thing all the time to Nigerians. Why can't you people reason? Don't believe what we are telling you. Don't believe what I'm telling you. No, you don't have to. I'm only asking you to go and do a bit of... Go back to history. I keep telling you all the time. Say, just to, a little bit. Just go to history for about one hour a day. Just go into your Google and say, what is the original name of Sokoto? They will tell you. Who are the owners of Sokoto? They will tell you these are Hausa people. They will tell you Sokoto is Gobe. Then you ask yourself, how did this name change from Gobe to Sokoto? It is exactly what is happening today. They move one cattle in. They move uh, one Sariki in. They move one Malam in. And that's the end of you. And then you get an emirate. Is it not happening in Joss? They say they are praising. They are very clever people. They are praising Governor Lalong of Plateau State. Can't you see he's doing well? Because there is a, not even Sariki, there is an M.A. of Joss. These are the things you ought to understand. But they will come after you. They will try to inundate you with conflicting and confusing messages. If you are not strong, you fall for it. Please ask those from Aochi. When did Islam come to Aochi in a door state? Go and ask. Uh, like play, like play. If you let us forget, Sokoto is too far, Kanu is too far, or Katsina is too far. Use Aochi that is close to home. Aochi, use Aochi as an example. In a door state. Aochi in a door state is almost Islamic. Edo, Igodomi Godo. If you don't know, let me tell you. That is their game plan. What they intended to do was to dangle 2023 in front of you. He's going to the south. He's going to the west. He's going to the east. As you're busy preparing and salivating to enter into Asorok in 2023, before you wake up, they will tell you, oh, please be a good Nigerian. Don't he evict those in your forest. They are, they are feeding their cattle. If not for the coming of IPOB, do you know what would have become of you? For everybody. I said everybody. If not for IPOB, all of you in the zoo would have been gone by now. What they want to do is to unleash mayhem by next year. So there will be no elections. Before you know it, Britain will step in and say, Oh, but leave them now. After all, you have evil people in Seven Gary in Kano. Why don't you allow them to be in your forest in Okwa, in a, in a, in a, in a boy, in Anambra? Leave them now. Let them relax. Why don't they take over a state? Oh, leave them. In the next 50, 60 years, you are gone. Finished as a race.
ask yourself this question. Why must they conquer with their cattle? Under thought law, T O Google it T O R T T O R for Romeo T for Tango. Thought law. Under thought law, you don't even need to legislate about Fulani entering into your farm. Once you see them, you kill all of them. Because they have come to destroy your livelihood and your property. When somebody comes into your house to steal your flat screen TV, do you allow them to go free? Then why must they go to your farm and destroy your crops? When is that? Is, is head speech. Mind what you say. I say, are you a fool? Are you telling me I can drive pigs into the palace of the, of the emir? Or uh, should I say the sultan of Sokoto? And they will allow you to go free? They're telling you, oh, we need to move cattle from place to place. Is our Let us go and do pigry in the north. Let us go to Sokoto and do pigry now. And be riding pigs very close to the palace of the sultan of Sokoto. And you see what will happen to everybody. Why must you then allow it to happen to you? Why must all of you allow Fulani to intimidate you all the time? They hire some idiots, both male and female idiots, loud mounted fo fools. All the time. All the time. I don't know exactly what is happening. I was, I was doing this and uh, is somebody disconnecting me? I have no idea what the hell is going on. Somebody appears to be disconnecting me from from our system i don't know you know the attack comes from everywhere i know facebook is pretty stable i don't know why people are doing this uh, somebody all of a sudden switched what i'm saying on our satellite and our radio and also on our apps and i have no idea why they would do that but we'll continue <laughs> we will continue we are back we are reconnecting and we have reconnected on that very platform that's what they will do all the time. They try to attack us. They pay. Do you know how much money they're paying people to try, to try to stop what we are doing? They have always failed and they will continue to fail. What we are lecturing this evening, I'm sure that Facebook will not like it. I'm sure Britain is not going to like it. I, I'm sure that all the agents of neocolonialism, none of them is going to like it. I know they won't like it. I know they're not going to like it. I told her, why is somebody is somebody from USA trying to tamper with what we are doing? Is somebody from the USA trying to tamper with tell somebody in the United States of America somebody there is trying to tamper with what we are doing? Please tell them to get off that I'm live on air. Please. Somebody from Radio USA2 at IPOB.org is seriously messing about with our program this evening tell them to please clear off let them bugger off i don't care who the idiot is radio usa2 should not please interfere with what we are doing and i need confirmation please please do bear with me i need confirmation that those of you listening via the app that you are listening please somebody idiotically in the USA is coming into our platform this evening to try and disrupt what we're doing. How foolish, how hopeless. Very, very sad indeed. But we must continue. We should continue. I want everybody to listen, please, to what I have to say. Under the extant laws of the damnable zoological republic, grazing on another man's land without permission is called trespass. And when somebody trespasses on your property, you can do to them whatever you like. It is the law, natural law, obtainable all over the world. Which happens when a person intentionally enters your land without permission. What is now happening in the zoo is that the states or in Nigeria, Nigerian state, the so oh, we want one more state. We want two more states. All these states, they are mushroom local government areas. Glorified local government, they cannot do anything. They cannot even enforce this very law. Do you know why they cannot enforce it? Because what you have in Nigeria is a federal police. I want people to listen very carefully. You are running a federation. A federation sometimes because the zoo animals, they copied the United States of America constitution. In America, you, have, you don't even have federal police. What you have is FBI. They investigate. Now, if they come to, say, Georgia and they investigate, when they finish the investigation, they now hand it over to 
the local police, be it county, be it metropolitan, be it um, whatever it is, county or metropolitan police, they now prosecute you via the office of the public prosecutor, or they call it, what they call it again, the, um, I've forgotten what it's called, the prosecutor in East State, somebody's going to tell me in America, it's called, not attorney general, it's called something, I've forgotten what it's called, it's escaped me completely. Old age is catching up with me. Um, what is it called again? They, um, they, they actually vote them in, into power. I'm sure one of those very clever people in America will tell me very, very shortly. One of those very clever people in America will tell me, what's it called? You know the one you, not at you know the, the state one that you vote for, the, the prosecutor in the state. Some of you in America, please um, uh, uh, send me a message. Via signal, please. What is the name of? Oh my goodness! It's called. Um, is it attorney? Not attorney general. No, not at all. But I know they vote for that very individual in America. They now prosecute you. But now let me tell you something about the zoo that you don't know, because Nigeria runs only one tier. In a federation, you're supposed to have multi tier. You have the federal, you have the state, you have the local or county government or whatever it is. But in Nigeria, very funny enough, they claim they are running a federal structure. They only run a federal police, so that. When somebody, when somebody commits a crime that is not a federal crime, but a crime legislated for by a particular state, how therefore do you expect district attorney, thank you very much, Uchenna, thank you, it's called district attorney, and they vote for them in America. Do you know America has no federal police? There is no Nigerian police force. Even their name makes me sick. Police force. How can a police be a force? I asked them before, the Britain that gave you policing in England, do the police carry guns on the street arresting people? The answer is no. Where did you learn this very primitive behavior from? They cannot tell you. But I'll tell you this evening. In America, there is something called the district attorney. They prosecute. Now, let me tell you how it goes. If you commit a federal crime, it's called a federal offense in America. Please, those of you in America, correct me if I'm wrong. And luckily enough for me, my secretary is a lawyer in America. Now, if you commit a federal offense, FBI will step in and investigate the crime. Hand over to the local district attorney for them to prosecute you. If you commit a state crime, the state police or whatever, the state or county police will prosecute you. But because Nigeria is run by Fulani Janjaweed, they know that this law exists that prohibits Fulani men from putting their cattle in your farm. And because you only have one enforcement arm, a federal police, not state, all of that nonsense, we have banned a cattle movement uh, as they did with the, with the Yoruba governors and only yesterday, thankfully, Dave Umahi announced that they are now also banning a uh, movement of cattle around uh, the whole of the east, should I say southeast, uh, in this very case. Do you know why after announcing it, you still see cattle on the road the next day? as they did in Yoruba land the other day. Do you know why? Because if these are state laws that should be enforced by state police, but because you do not have state police and because the police at in, in Abuja, controlled from Abuja, do not have the legislative, or should I say the legal mandate to go and enforce any laws in Oyo or in Ondo, they will not stop the headman from moving. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Now, listen again to me very, very carefully, please. When you run a federal system of government, the government at the center will have their own law enforcement arm, as they do in America. It's called FBI. The local, um, even, I'm sure even in Germany, they have the federal police in Germany. And they have the, the police in Bayern. They have the police in, um, in, what's it called, all those places that they have in Westphalia. They have their own local police. So when you commit a crime that cuts across borders, it becomes a federal offense. Now the police at the federal level can step in. But say the state of Bayern, or should I say the state of Florida can decide to make a law that is very specific to Florida. If you break that very law, FBI will not arrest you. The local police in Florida will arrest you and they will prosecute you in Florida courts. But in Nigeria, they copied American style. <laughs> Listen carefully. After copying American style, they do not have the discipline to make sure that the system of governance and law enforcement is structured to reflect that 
fed federation that they claim that they are. Now you see why I call them a zoo. You know, they didn't go to school. They, are go they, are so they go to dictionary and they cram words. They write in this day newspaper. They write, hey, oh, 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 oh. People mistake uh, what I call grammatical wizardry as intellect or intelligence or elitism. It means nothing. You know nothing. All these years, when they were clamoring for state police, none of them ever articulated this very problem. Nobody said to you, the reason why you can ban Fulani headsmen from coming into your state all you like, if there is no enforcement arm, if there is nobody to enforce that very law, you are talking rubbish. And in the zoo, they know, Fulani Janjawi, they know that the federal police cannot enforce state-based laws banning grazing. Very clever. They, th they think they're smart. They think they are intelligent. Do you see how daft they are? Do you now begin to understand and appreciate what we are saying? That when we call Nigeria a zoo, it's for a, they have PhD, SSG, all these stupid, idiotic degrees that they've accumulated. They cannot reason. Why is it that Omai is claiming that they banned it a long time ago? Why wasn't it enforced? Or your state only the other, in fact, Yoruba governors, only a few days ago. Only a few days ago, they banned uh, uh, open grazing in Yoruba land. The next, not up to four hours, uh, I think uh, uh, one of the newspapers published uh, Fulani Headsmen moving into all your state. Do you know the reason why nobody to police, nobody to enforce that very law? Had Yoruba uh, governors, if they had their own state police, that is why Fulani don't want state police. <laughs> they said they want community policing. You, so they are playing with your brain, but you don't understand. You don't understand. Now again, there you people don't know them. They are playing. Oh, what we want is community policing. Community policing. They fail to tell you that in any federal structure anywhere in the world, after the federal police, you have the state police. Even after state police, you have local government. The one they call. Um, um, is it a uh, uh, pressing pressing? President in America, is it the border? Police? <laughs> or metropolitan police? Do you see how they're playing with your brains? Full learning, moving cattle from place to place should not happen anywhere in Nigeria. Nowhere at all! Because the law says this should not happen. Ask them, since it was a federal law because the pronouncement was made by a federal judge, why is it that the full learning run Nigeria police Allow this nonsense to prevail all the time. Why? Ask yourself that question. Because they know they're using cattle to take over your land and they're using it to conquer you. They use it in our forest. Fulani live in the forest. And I asked the idiot, I said to them, Fulani, you people came from the Sahel, from the desert. You people are desert creatures. Since when did you start living in a rainforest? Since when? Show me one rainforest that you live in the full and show me one rainforest. One. It's only in the zoo called Nigeria. They want to come and live in the rainforest. <laughs> then I want to lay down the law first before we go into action. I want to let people understand. Anywhere you see Fulani with their cattle on the road, be it on the streets of Abuja, anywhere, they are breaking the law. You should kill those cattle. They are breaking the law. Anywhere you see Fulani, anywhere you see Nama on the road, they are breaking the law. Because Nigerian law itself, the zoo law itself, forbids it. They think we are fools. Under the laws of Nigeria, it's called trespass. But the state do not have the power nor the authority to enforce it because there is no state police. <laughs> that is where IPOB, <laughs> that is where ESN <laughs> has to come in now. Somebody has to enforce the law. Or else the law will become an ass. It's, 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 why make a law if you can't enforce it? So I am thanking Dave Umahi and all the governors for now making it possible for ESN to legally enforce the law. Because there is a law. And anybody saying that the formation of ESN is illegal, can, I'm asking them who is going to enforce the law, this very law that the that Southeastern governors made. Who is going to enforce it?
These are state laws. There is no state police. Who's going to enforce it? And lives are at risk. I hope you're following. Maybe after tonight, they'll be shaking. I am letting Nigeria. Anytime you see a Fulani on the road with their cattle, it's our way of life. We are moving. The law says you cannot do it. That's what the law says. You cannot do it. And I wish that Amotekun can also enforce that in the West as well. Because the state have failed to enforce the law. Nigeria failed to enforce their own law now. Citizens are rising up to enforce that very law which is their right to do. Ask them, I want them to take us to court now. Let's go to court. Can I don't know law. I will teach you the law that you don't know. We are a state fails in its duty to discharge a function that is legal. Then the citizens have it. Why do you have citizens arrest? Do you know you can arrest somebody and take them to the police station and hand them over? It's called citizens arrest. Do you have the right to arrest anybody? No, you're not the police. But there is a law that not, um, a thought law that says, as a citizen, when you see somebody breaking the law, you can hand them over to the police. Common sense. I don't know what they teach them in that zoo. You people, I, I feel sorry for them. I don't know what they teach them in their universities. Open grazing of cattle has been banned by law in Nigeria since 1969. 1969. This has been reaffirmed by the South Yoruba governors and by Igbo governors. But the problem is who is going to enforce the law? It is the law, yes. Has Fulani enforced it? But no, they control Fulani. The funniest thing is that they will even use the police and the army to aid and abate murderers and killers, moving cattle from place to place. In any other civilized climate, they will impeach the presidency of the zoo. But sadly, in the damnable zoological republic, nobody will do anything about it. I want you to follow me carefully. You bring that to your pen and be writing all these things down. Huh? It's for free. Yes, it's free. Free lecture that your useless, idiotic law professors cannot teach you. All that is to, is to cram grammar. Cram grammar. And look for who to sleep with to, to give the marks to pass. Or for courties to give them money so they can uh, pass them. They teach you nothing. I feel sorry for some of you because in the zoo there are law graduates. They don't, they don't even know what I'm teaching you tonight. They have no idea what I'm teaching you tonight. That there is a law in Nigeria. It's called anti-grazing law since 1969. The law says Fulani cannot move cattle. Forget about their way of life. That is immaterial. The law says you cannot move any cattle. That law has not been repealed. There is no other legislation superior to that one. They came down in the east. They were saying, oh, we, we have, uh, we sat down. No more open grazing. In the west, the same thing. But every day, Florida will bring cattle to your farm to destroy it. And kill you. Uh, rape you on top of that. And none of you has ever sat down to say, if this law exists, how come Fulani is doing what they are doing? It's because you are in a zoo now. Your law, your law is meaningless. That is why the citizens are now rising up to enforce that very law. That is why Amoteku is legal. That is why ESN is legal. Because there is a law made by a government that needs to be enforced. Government has failed to enforce that very law. Then citizens will then enforce the law. Simple and very, very short. To this end, I am directing every IPOB family unit across Biafra land. You're all going to print posters. You know, big banner. You're going to print a very big banner. We are going to make it very, very clear that any cattle in the next, I think it's, um, is it 10 or 11 days from now, any cattle we see on the road, we don't care where it is, so we don't care if you're in the forest, so we don't care if you're on the main road, so anywhere we see any cattle in our land, we'll take the cattle down, we'll kill it. Because there is a law backing what we are doing that says that you cannot bring cattle on the east. There is a law. No grazing, no trespassing, no. It's there. Since and what I said every IPOB family, place this banner everywhere. Print it. You know the way they do their campaign poster. Put it everywhere. 
to warn every traditional ruler, PG, anybody colluding, conniving with Fulani killer heads men, giving them settlement. No, no, no. The law is against it. Because what they are doing is they are aiding and abating open grazing, which is against the law. So they are complices in this very crime being committed by the Fulani. Do you understand it? When Fulani buys land or enters or inhabits a forest, and your Igwe or your Eze or your Oba or Yawa, I don't know what they call it, is, is, is involved, they too are breaking the law <laughs> because you are aiding and abating people who are breaking the law i hope some of you are paying attention to me this evening it's a law lecture for free I'm giving it to you for free now listen open grazing is a crime in the zoo trespassing upon another man's land as these murderous Fulani headsmen are doing is a crime. It is a crime. Let us not pretend. It's their way of life. They come from Mali. They need to see it in the forest. They sleep in the forest. Rubbish. It is a crime. The law says it is a crime. A criminal offense. That's what it is. Uh, uh, and we, but mind you, we are miscreants, so don't forget that. You know, and I'm number one miscreant. A professor, law professor, pro professor of etymology, rubbish. They know nothing. Their brains are empty. <laughs> oh, sometimes they add emeritus. They are lunatic seven. Damnable zoological republic. They are condemned people. Condemned. Condemned as a living flesh and condemned in spirit. They know nothing. Their brains are empty. And you want to challenge the children of light. Dear Jamami, here we are more people who are born into intelligence. You don't know that? You think and defeat us. You think now is a uh, pretend will come to your rescue. And, and you throw bomb from the air. You throw bomb and you run back. <laughs> Look at all they, they took to the air. They, they, after coming three times on the ground, they were repelled. They went and fly and disturbing uh, Anuf and Kiko, disturbing bears of, uh, of prey in the air. Disturbing migratory birds from Scandinavia going to South Africa to go and feed. Idiots. They come on the ground and they were disgraced. They ran and, and, and now using uh, running around with their jets uh, uh, in the skies. Disturbing birds. If you know the amount of hatred we have in us, if you know the amount of hatred we have against the zoo, hey, my God in heaven. You have no idea. I feel sorry for the zoo. <laughs> feel sorry for the zoo. Trespassing is a crime. And it is not even a southern. I, saw, I, I read one idiotic Janjaweed claiming he's a professor talking rubbish. The, the south is against Fulani. No longer house of Fulani. The south is against Fulani. Lunatics everywhere. Listen very carefully to this. The law of anti-grazing is not a southern law. I want to educate the Fulani Janjaweed. The Fulani Janjaweed, I'm telling you what you don't know. In northern Nigeria, where these Fulani killer headsmen come from, such trespass is a crime. In the north, it is a crime. That thing they are bringing to the south. In the north, it is a crime. Oh. <laughs> now listen carefully to me, please. You know we are learned. I need to go with you, okay? Listen carefully. Trespass is a crime as enacted at section 342 of the Nigeria Penal Code, applicable in northern Nigeria. In their penal code in the north, Fulani, what Fulani are doing with their cattle is a crime. So I want to let the Fulani understand it is not a southern conspiracy by Yoruba governors or Igbo governors as the case may be, or eastern governors. No, not at all. In your own penal code in the north. It is, a, it is a crime, and I want to tell you where it is. Section 342 of the Penal Code. It's in the north. And I'll read it for you, for your information. Hey! Whoever enters into or upon property in the possession of another with intent to commit an offense or to, to intimidate, not even to eat the crops, so to intimidate, insult or annoy a person 
in possession of that property or having lawfully entered into or upon that property unlawfully remains there with intent thereby to intimidate, insult or annoy such a person or with intent to commit an offense is said to commit a criminal trespass. In the north, I'm not talking about south, oh. in the north, all we are asking for is we want these laws to be policed. What we are asking for is that we want these laws to be properly enforced. If you enforce these laws, there will be no ESN. We will close it down. Enforce your law. I am saying this so that Britain can hear me. So that the UK High Commissioner to the zoo can hear me. So the US Ambassador to the zoo called Nigeria can hear me very well. We are asking the Nigerian state to enforce their own laws applicable in northern Nigeria. Not even in the south or in the north. Because had they been enforcing these laws, there is no way a cattle can start from Funtua and uh, land somewhere at Nazi, you know what? It's not possible. I hope that some of you are listening this evening. There is no way, there is no way a cattle can leave the north and come to, because even in the north itself, that cattle must pass through somebody's property. I hope you're listening very carefully. How many dams do they have in the zoo called Nigeria? Some of you go run to Dubai all the time. You go to Saudi Arabia, they are desert. They receive on average about six inches of rain every blessed year. They have no water. But there is something called irrigation, something that Pharaoh used to do nearly 5,000 years ago. Pharaohs of Egypt. Something that Pharaoh was able to do and Roman conquerors did 3,000 years ago. People in the 21st century cannot do it. Why can't they take water from any of the reservoirs they have in the north and irrigate fields and desert for their cattle to eat? Because they know what they're doing. They are using that cattle as their own law says to intimidate you, to harass you, and to take possession of your possession. That's what they're doing. And all of you are there clapping. Uh, what he said is doing this thing you are doing. You don't have money for the value on that. Are lunatics everywhere. Mad people. Useless fools that do not have the benefit of sound education. No sound education. Fools with their third rate degrees from useless kindergarten that they call universities in the zoo. Kindergarten. If they had enforced these laws in the north, there is no way a cattle can leave Katsina and make it all the way to River State. Do you watch? It's not possible. They come by road. They tell you, hey, cattle highway. <laughs> they are using it to conquer you. Some of you don't have any brain, but here, we force you to acquire one by force. Lunatics everywhere. Whoever enters into a property in possession of another person, whoever enters into another man's property with the intent to commit an offense, to eat up his crops, or to debate him, or to assault him, or to even to annoy, that person is said to have committed what is called a criminal trespass. This law is applicable in northern Nigeria. <laughs> Not in the south, north. But nobody cares. Any law that impedes the march of the Fulani Janjaru to the Atlantic Ocean is jettisoned. Nobody cares to enforce it. No, 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 no. They are marching to the Atlantic Ocean. Where Asian is waiting for them to embrace them. <laughs> Very sad indeed. <laughs> As they are marching, the pig is in the swamp, it's nothing. Waiting for their masters to arrive. But unfortunately, <laughs> in our trip, uh, they were stopped. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And for Fulani to claim that open grazing is their custom <laughs> shows that they are mad. It was not a Biafran, it was a Yoruba man, Justice Adewale Thompson, 17th of April 1969. This is what a, the man that actually made this law. Because if you go to a court, as I told you before, and there is a judicial pronouncement that becomes law, let me tell you what this Yoruba man said to Fulani. This argument they're making now, they made it in 1969. Over 50 years ago, it's not new. You know the thing about Fulani is that they never give up. 
They keep coming at you. They keep coming. They keep coming with the same narrative. The same. They. <laughs> All they want to do is to wear you down. Unfortunately, they wear people down easily, but not IPOB. They wear you down. They go and recruit people from your village. They recruit those they have um, located to Abuja or to Lagos to be talking rubbish. After a while, with the aid and help of corrupt zoo newspapers, they wear you down psychologically, but not us. 50 years. The same thing they're saying on Channels TV today. They said it 50 years ago. I said 50. Two years after I was born, because I'm an old man, I'm 53 now. You see the seal here, somebody who's 36 will say, what that young man is doing. <laughs> but I love it anyway. I love it. Now listen carefully. This is what Justice Adewale Thompson said. You must listen. You must, some of you, that in my, uh, when we were small, we used to sing a song. And then I told Jack there's one idiot in my village. Idiot on your jack. She doesn't want to go to school. People who are afraid of learning. This night you must learn. Zoo people must learn this night. You must learn how to. If not for any other thing, go and put it down. Second day of February 2021, the day that your brains opened. You must reason tonight. The same argument you're seeing on AIT, on Roots TV, on Good Morning Africa, Good Morning Zoo, Good Morning uh, Fulani, or uh, the same argument on BBC Hauser. The same fool and the people made the same argument over 50 years ago. In fact, uh, 52 years ago. The same argument. And let us hear what the judge said to them. The judge said to fool and the people. And this is what, in fact, please, can somebody please cut this thing out? Anytime they make that useless, um, uh, uh, is our custom, cut this thing out. They, they don't know that we do research. We, that the, they don't know that we went to school. If they see IPOB, they, they, do you know what makes us formidable? Because we're all intelligent people. Do you think it's easy to convince an evil man to, to follow an ideology? <laughs> go and try now. I say go and try. You think it's easy to convince an evil man to love an evil man to pursue an ideology? I say go and try. You think it's easy to convince an ethnic man to love an evil man to love an evil man to pursue an ideology? I say go and try. You think it's easy to convince an Ejo man, to love an Ishekiri man, to love an Urobo man, to love Isoko man, to love an Igbo man, to possess an adult, and say, go and try now. Go and try it and see. Because they have to be convinced about the validity, authenticity, the originality of what you're doing before they come with you. These are the most difficult people on the face of this earth. So difficult is untrue. But behind their difficulty, lies one thing which is why what i respect them for anytime they find sense in what you're doing they follow you that's how they are they never follow anybody sheepishly you can't go to church on sunday and say election is on friday make sure you vote for uh, ampp no but in the north in their mosque that's what they do they tell you who to vote for despite all the pressures they put on the people of the east to vote for buhari in 2011 and 20 they said no this man is a bad market. Is it not happening today? Are these the type of people who you think you can fool? You can tell them, well, come follow me and they follow you without seeing something? Now, let me tell you what you have to say to Flanny Jan Jawid when they come with that rubbish. It's our custom and our tradition. Just tell them what Justice Adewale Thompson told them in 1969. 17th of April, 69. He said, I do not accept the contention of Fulani people that a custom... That a custom exists which imposes an obligation on the owner of a farm to fence his farm while the owner of the cattle allows his cattle to wander like pest. E -G -G, pest, pest, P E S T. To wander like a pest and cause damage. This your so called flanny headsman. Like, you know, I went to America and some lawmakers in America tell me, oh, he's, he's about uh, climate change. And I asked them, when did this climate change? They said in the past a few decades. I said, but in 1969, Fulani were still making the argument of farmer header clashes, farmer header clashes in all the way back in 1969. Then was there any climate change? Any desert encroachment? The same argument. If you hold them here, they jump there. You hold them there, they jump there. They were, before they were arguing, it is climate change. Now it is their custom. You go to their custom, they say it's climate change. We don't know what 
just playing ping pong with your brain, ping pong. And uh, the useless idiot who is an editor in, uh, in Abuja or Lagos will be following them up and down. You know when you're watching ping pong ball, they play it here, you, your, your head will go left. They play, your head will go right. That's what they do. Nigerian newspapers are aiding and abating evil and lawlessness. It is them. I say it openly. Nigerian editors, journalists, and newspapers, they are the worst aiding this evil. Nobody can come out and do an editorial or do an op-ed and write on the front page that there is an anti-grazing law in this country that prohibits foreigners to, from moving their cattle from A to B. The law is there. They can never do it. Punch will not do it. Nation will not. Because everybody wants presidency. Everybody wants to, to be in the good books of Abuja. Because of that, they kill the truth. And because we speak the truth, that is why they hate us. Now you understand it, don't you? I am preaching to the children of heaven, so they will understand me. Now listen very carefully. Oh, Adewale Thompson, wherever you are, it will be well with you. I do not accept the contention of Fulani. Fulani is claiming it's their tradition, is that to live in the forest, is our way of life. The same argument they made over 50 years ago, they are still making today. And the judge said to them, you cannot bring your cattle to destroy somebody's produce, farm produce. Asking the person to fence his farm. Now they're asking for Ruga. Which judges of Kalu gave them at Logba, of course. Such a custom, if it exists, is unreasonable. In 1969, a Yoruba judge, a learned man, said to them, if this is your practice of living in people's bushes, this your custom is unreasonable. It is there. What's it going now? Now tell me why you will question the formation of ESN. Tell me why any sensible beast will question why ESN was formed or why Amotekun was formed. Just tell me. When the people you are dealing with are unreasonable, do not move your cattle. That is what the law says. If you say it is your tradition or your custom, this your tradition is unreasonable. A judge told me something that politicians say. Even judges these days, they can't even hear the case. Talk less of making such pronouncement. They will kill you in the court. They can't. Is it very clear now? Is it very clear now to all of you? Jumping up and down. All of you badly educated zoo animals, is it very clear to you now that we are within our rights to slaughter every cattle we see in our land? And God is my witness in the next 11 days, you will see something you have not seen before. Any cattle seed on the streets will be killed. I don't care if it's an Opi Wake, a market. I don't care if it's an Iguacha. Anywhere we see cattle in Biafra land, we kill it. Take us to Hague. Take us to Britain. The law is here. All we need to do is to bring out this law. I won't talk. Just to bring out the law. And I'll ask whoever is hearing the case. Please, my lord, can you read out this thing, please? After reading a deed, we feel ashamed of him or herself for having accepted to hear the case in the first place. Justice Thompson said, This your practice or custom, if at all it exists, so, it's unreasonable to impose the burden of fencing a farm on the farmer without corresponding obligation on the cattle owner to fence his cattle. Why don't you fence your cattle? The judge asked them. 1969, no? I don't know. You can't well, I'm this people either. I don't know why Chiko Kikabi might put me in this part of the world. But how can I be here with, with, with people who cannot reason? Huh? What type of God made these people? Are you sure it was God that made some of you? Are you sure it's the same God that created other races that made You people are just horrible people. You have refused to reason. So it is silly for any state governor to tell you that he needs anti grazing law. Nobody needs anti grazing laws. Nobody. No, you don't. Anywhere you see for an to kill it. You don't need anti grazing law. You need, is there, the law is there already. In 1969, the law is there. Anyway, in, I think it's 11 days. Hey, Chineke, you will see blood flowing on the streets of Biafra land. You will see, even, I'm sure, even NASA um, um, spacecraft will see it. There will be rivers of blood in the land of Biafra. Cattle blood or not human blood. Cattle blood. Anywhere we see them, we slaughter them. Get them prepared for what is to come. We are enforcing the law that the zoo 
have refused to enforce. What we need is implementation, and that's what we're going in 11 days' time. I think it's 11 days. Please correct me if I'm wrong when I give the or 11 days. Any cattle you see, you slaughter it. It's trespass, they are breaking the law. But why should any governor fail to act? The laws have given them the right to do so. Section 292 of the criminal code, and let me tell you what it says it is lawful for any person who is in peaceable possession of any land, structure, vessel, or place, or who is entitled to the control or management of the, any land, structure, or vessel, or authority, to use such force as is reasonably necessary in order to prevent any person from wrongfully entering upon such land. I want to tell the people who are yapping, people who are talking rubbish, under Nigerian Criminal Code, Section 292, Everything that was done in Bende is legal. When we catch Fulani Kira headsmen, drive them away from our bushes, and slaughter their cattle, we are within the laws. That's what the law says. And let me remind the fools about this very law. Section 292 of the Criminal Code, it says that any time you see Fulani entering your land with their cattle, kill the cattle. Is here the laws of Nigeria? <laughs> the laws of Nigeria, and uh, thank you very much. Somebody said that the, the poster should be printed in Hausa in English and in maybe in full food in full food full language, full bed or full food they call it three languages in 11 days' time. Elohim is our witness. Any cattle seen on the streets anywhere, brother, will be slaughtered. Let me tell you what they're going to do. come with the army and the police. And I want to remind the whole world, before you start saying, uh, that is a, a, if the army are attacked, any army officer, any army formation that provides any, that rides what is called shotgun, provides security, armed security to any of these headers, any of these killer headers, you are putting yourselves and your lives in danger because you will go down. 11 days time. I am saying it now so that the uh, uh, Sarikin Fulani, uh, so that the Sultan of Sokoto will hear me very well. And I want to address him. Sultan of Sokoto, recall your people back to the north from whence they came. Take them back to your Emirates and continue to lord it over Hausa people. We are not Hausa. We are not primitive and we are not timid. You cannot take our land from us. Recall these your foot soldiers. Or else there'll be bloodbath in Biafra land. In 11 days' time, if you don't recall, if, if I see one, if I hear a report of there is one cattle, one, one outside in Biafra land roaming about. Hey. Lord have mercy. That thing you people want, you, you get it. Raw, you get it raw. And then you will know that 67 to 70. It's not this time that we live in. The world has moved on. The world has moved on. We are about to shock you bastards. We are about to shock you. I get me you new. In your next life, when you hear Nam the Khan, you say, no, I don't want to be born yet. Mad people everywhere. You want to bring your cattle in our time when I'm alive to take over my, the land of my ancestors from this generation. You think it's possible? Is that what you think? I'm asking you. You think yeah, so? We'll just be that 2023. You were presidency, yeah, unity and progress, unity and love. You take my land, the land of the ancients, the oldest people on this earth. You want to take their land from them? I don't know. You, you, it seems you're high on, on Brookwood. You know, man, you people are drunk. You're high on Brookwood. People are mad. Now, listen to me. It provides that it is lawful for a person. Who, if you're in your house and you look through your window, you see Fulani bringing that, slaughter the cattle. Slaughter it. And tie them. <laughs> tie the Fulani killer heads, man. The law says you should do so. I have the law here. The law is here. For the idiots who are not educated, the law is here. They think we are joking. They think we are joking. In all the places they have been killing. That's why they took out. You know, Fulani, they come with overwhelming intimidation. 
Then that's why they try, you know, <laughs> IPOB or Atacatelo, you know that part of meat. That's a part of meat that we call Atacatelo. I don't know what it is in English. And please, the brother, don't interpret for me. Atacatelo, you keep chewing and chewing. If you're tired, you swallow it. If you don't know. You have a government that don't even know their own laws. All of you, my church, they cannot, these people. You have a government, they don't even, they cannot even call the attorney general to say, please tell us, is this thing we are doing, is it legal? <laughs> they don't even do it. Mad people everywhere. Absolutely mad. Insanity upon insanity. Wretched drunkards everywhere. They think we are joking. Uh, 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 Northern elders beg Buhari, beg Buhari, governors to arrest, prosecute attackers of Flanny headsmen. The law says we should attack them. <laughs> That's what your law says. You want me to read for you again? That's what your law says. You see the type of idiots you vote for every four years? You see the idiots every four years you go to a polling station and these are the, the wretched souls you vote for. These are your intellectuals. They don't know the law. Arrest people attacking Flanny. will attack. In, anyway, you don't attack. In 11 days' time, you will see. That thing you want, you get it. Double fold. And let me tell you something. My method is very simple. I've told you this before. There is a method in our madness. The way we operate, there is a, a clear path we are following. We will draw out this army from the north. Jan they, they know that Jan they will come. We will draw this army from the north. They will come to the east. And terrorists will occupy their land. Hardened terrorists will take their land from them. They will have nowhere to go to. You will see what's going to happen. But uh, uh, when the history of the zoo will be written in years to come, they will say this time was very, very decisive. We know what we are doing. We will draw them in into our land and we will kill them there. You see what's going to happen now? And we are running away. You will see what's going to happen. They are about to see what they have not seen before. From today onwards, anywhere that any Biafran, we have told them before, if you shoot a Biafran dead, we will decimate you. Police station and information, you will die that same night. We want to raise the level of our madness because it's coming up, but it's not in, in 11 days' time. Then we go to intermediate medium. Then after that, we go to full blown madness. When I hear Wara, you see madness. The type we've not seen before. Mad people everywhere. You people think that you can, you can mess about. In our time, you come and you take Gafra from us, the land. Where creation started from the center of this earth, zero longitude, zero light. You want to take it? <laughs> hey, okay, we, we, we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Police is your friend. Police is your friend. Don't take the laws into your hands. All this rubbish. Don't take the laws. Let the law take its course. <laughs> but you have not been doing anything. The same law. You're asking me not to take it into my hands. It's the same law that you used to bring the terrorists into the army. You rehabilitate bandits. You give them cars, helots. You give them money. You give them AK-47. To run no army and police. And you're telling me not to take laws into my hands. I, when you're saying all, don't you sound foolish? When you say all these things, don't, don't, it doesn't sound foolish to you. Don't take laws into your hands. Hey, please, northern elders beg Buhari, uh, Buhari uh, governors to arrest, prosecute attackers of foreign headsmen. Uh, okay. But all these years, you, 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 <laughs> I don't know what to call people because Facebook will say I'm insulting people. You unconscionable, blood-sucking demons. That's the best I can find for now. How many times have you asked for and stop raping women at Nimbo? Please publish the Nimbo massacre so they can see it. Because the world do not understand what is going on. Do some of you know what happened at Nimbo? Please can you publish it? It's in Wikipedia. Nimbo massacre. What did the Fulanis do to us in Nimbo? That Yuguani was calling Buhari. He, then when he did us a life, he refused to pick the call. Now they're saying arrest them. You know, this nonsense can maybe work with my Yoruba brethren. Maybe work with Middle Belt. It can work in the East though. Oh, this is your nonsense. Arrest them. Do this. It can work with other people. It doesn't work with us. Let that governor try you now. <laughs> Let the governor try. Is it? Is this, your, this is your people. <laughs> okay. Your people. Go and kill them. And let me. Every time I come on air, I keep saying, 
What I will do to Wiki, any ear that hears it will bleed blood. You see, Wiki, on a match out in our with his little Hitler mustache. I will catch him. What I will do to Wiki, any ear that hears it in this world will vibrate. His day is coming. You think we're going to forget? <laughs> you, you are insane. You are absolutely insane. After dealing with Wiki, anywhere you see, be from people again, you cannot you can never attack them. Nobody will attack them. After we can, after setting it up, I'm saying it loud. So when I do it, you know it's me. I'm saying it loud and clear so the whole world will hear me. After dealing with me, anywhere you see their friends doing meeting or doing something, you will avoid them. Uh uh, I will kill you today. Hasn't seen I want to die today. You will see it. All of you. You think uh, this is like before? You kill us, we run to EU. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. I want to bring to your attention. They killed 50 of us today at National High School. They killed uh, uh, 600 of us at Tampa every day. That's what we are going to be doing. Every time we write, we are being peaceful. Check a book, we are about to see you. You are about to see something you have never seen before in your useless lives. You are about to be shown one of my published nimble. Let the whole world see what is going on. These are the same people that told us that killer heads men are foreigners. That's what they told us. Those killing you that are foreigners. And you know who said it? I think it was Buhari when he was alive. In 2016, because he died in 2017. Buhari, when he was alive in 2016, said, killer heads men are foreigners. Arrested ones cannot speak any Nigerian language. Now, full and name, you people are defending foreigners to come to my land to kill me. I have never seen anything of this sort before. I have never ever seen. Who are the people that brought violence into our land? Who brought violence into our land? Is it not Fulani headsmen? Is it not Fulani people? The same Fulani you told us are foreigners. Please publish it. Put it on my page. Killer headsmen are foreigners. So are they no, long, no longer foreigners? Have they all returned back to the Futajalon where you got them from? Arrested ones cannot speak any Nigerian language. If uh, today is foreigners, tomorrow is foreign. It's our custom today. Tomorrow is foreign. Just playing with people, playing with all of you. That is a. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. We okay, care. I'm going to set an example with. I'll send an example with him. Chineke Boyoko. Chineke Boyoko. I'm telling you the truth. That man. <laughs> what that man did? Did he know people? Hey, my goodness. Two Kawa people, young men, young women, Fulani, uncircumcised bastards. We are raping them at military camp in the north. Our women. That we took from Obibo. We took from Obibo. Took them to the north and they were big. Hey, she not come out of my brother. Anybody who says to me, forgive Wike, even Satan cannot forgive you. Wike must be made an example of that others may learn. And I'm saying it because when it happens, you know it was done by Nam the Kano. Don't blame anybody, it's me that would do it. Wike. I got up one and Wike. Oh God. Let's continue to preach this gospel of heaven. Open grazing is a crime. If you don't know, let me tell you now. It is a crime, an abomination before God and before man. No full army has been prosecuted. They are foreigners, so nobody can prosecute them. And you are in one Nigeria, claiming you are in one Nigeria, doing all this your nonsensical unity, talking rubbish every day. What do you do today at this day, uh, for this day, Nisuba? Thank you, Dijorio. That uh, uh, I act outside the law. <laughs> this idea. These are the people that claim that they went to school. Nobody prosecuted. Not one single foreigner. Eh? Not one. Not one. But they are foreigners. Oh. No foreigners. Foreigners. Killing us in our land. You come to our land. You rape our girls. You cut them into pieces. People pretend nothing happened. Because it's not their sister. It's not their daughter. That is what Fulani have reduced all of us to. I remember in those days when something happens to one person, everybody will rise in unison and condemn it. And condemn it. And condemn it. 
Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> we must continue. Police is your friend. <laughs> the Bible said that, um, uh, uh, that full and heads men should be dealt with under the law. Which law? This law that they are disobeying? The same law that says that you can't even move cattle out of the north. That's what the law says. That's the law you want uh, the police to deal with. And the police cannot enforce it. Because it's a fulanized police department. Every security architecture is run by the Fulani. Their agenda is the same. They may disagree on the, on the approach or modalities, but the agenda is always the same. Always the same to conquer you. And you know the funniest thing? They are like, okay, mouse in the house. When it's biting you, it's blowing breeze at the same time. So you won't know. As they are confused, they have confused almost 80% of you in this room. Confused, confused. They have set confusion amongst all of you. So I'm going to Igbo <laughs> presidency. Igbo president, president 2023. Let's change this government. By that time, they are firmly entrenched in your forest and in your farmlands. And for that person to prove that he or she is a detribalized president of Nigeria, they say, oh, leave them to stay there. And for those asking us to support Igbo presidency, we supported them to be governor, so, and they killed us in our thousands. As the president, and they'll send jets now to kill everybody now, to please the Fulani. You don't know that? The worst mistake we can ever make in our lives is to look at one of these wretched souls and say, let them become president of Nigeria. We are, we are doomed. Tell me the governor in the that didn't kill Biafrans. Just tell me, name one person. They all killed Biafrans, all of them. These are the people you want to go to. They killed you when they're in Iguacha, in Portacot, in Iguacha. They killed you. They killed you. Is it, is it from Abuja, where they can no longer see you? Surrounded by, by Danchiki and Abada. Hey, your life is over now. If you don't know, let me tell you. These are the things that people need to understand. That is why we do what we do. And I want the world to understand how serious we are about what we are pursuing. He's by police. They are destroying Igbo businesses in Kanu, in Bauji, everywhere. Nobody's talking. You know that we have been so dehumanized, dehumanized, to the extent whereby if they, they kill an Igbo person or destroy their business in Kanu, it's no longer news. <laughs> it's not news now. Is that why, is that why news? During an election, they can disenfranchise you. It's not news. Somebody will come out and destroy polling stations. Because there is a preponderance of Biafran voters that they destroy in broad daylight. Koro, koro. Nothing will happen. Because you're nobody. But not any longer. IPOB is here. And ESN has come. They can destroy our businesses in the north. We come back to the east to farm. They bring their cattle to destroy it as well. And we are in one Nigeria. Fighting for unity of Nigeria. <laughs> does, does that sound normal to you? Of course it doesn't. It doesn't. People shouldn't double into issues that are above their station. Omahi said he wants criminals cleared from Southeast Forest. Yes. We'll help you do that. Don't worry. We'll clear everywhere. Don't, don't disturb yourself. Go and be sleeping. The pronouncement has been made. ESM will enforce it rigorously and without mercy. If you think that what happened in Bende is bad, in Isikwata is bad, Watch what will happen in 11. Let me see. Let me get a report that is a cattle somewhere. Cattle. Cattle. Nama. Nah, but I freely. Oh, dear me. Lord have mercy. And I'm warning the police and the army because you will go and attach yourselves to them. You want to protect this uh, full and match, the Atlantic Ocean. You want to protect them. <laughs> I'm warning everybody. You. Let no cattle in 11, let no cattle come outside at all, at all, at all. I don't care or mind where it is. In the entire East, I don't want to see any cattle anywhere. So all these editors, they will now give you money because that's what they do. Once in a while, Lai Muhammad will disperse some brown envelope to all of you. you. You are prepared now to write your junk. But before you write your rubbish, please, make yourselves become acquainted with the laws of Nigeria, the laws of the zoo. 
it says that we have every right to stop Fulani from moving their cattle from place to place. That is what the laws of Nigeria says, please, for goodness sake, for your information. For your information. These are the things you must understand. I'm not even going to talk about the fact that um, the east is very small compared to the north. Yet, in the north, you don't find space for your cattle. It's in the east that the cattle will graze. We are saying no to that. It can never, ever happen. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. You came to our land. You settled in our land without paying any rent. In our forest. You use uh, the crops, our farm, our farm produce as food for your cows. We allowed you. You went from there to kidnapping, to raping, and to killing our people. So, ESN was the last resort. No option. After killing our sister, Atuli, and raping her, cutting her up into pieces. You think I will stay and remain? You think I'm like a Hanese? All these idiotic governors? Is that what you think? That we're going to keep quiet? Our wives to do anything you like? <laughs> of course not, man. It's not going to be possible. Today, we are making it very clear. If all the oppressed people unite, if all the oppressed people unite in the damnable zoological republic, everything will be fine. In as much as I love Europe and my people, I, I love them to bits. I'm being honest with you. I have those of them that I respect in Europe land. They are part of, they, 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 they gave Fulani the leeway to do what they're doing. How the Yoruba, had the West and the East come together a long time ago? This rubbish can't happen now. No, it can't happen. In the East, they will use the Fulefus, the traitors. And in the West, they will use uh, those they consider to be Muslims, like the Tinubu, to penetrate and cause havoc. But there's one good thing about Yoruba people. They, they never, ever allow religion to be cloud their sense of judgment. That's one thing I like about them. Once with these two, once the whole South says no, it will never happen. They will push you, they will cajole, they will bribe, they will do whatever they can to try to shift you, to move you. You must remain steadfast. And Fulani will run. That was exactly what the Shehu of Brano did to them. What the Shehu of Brano did to them. That is why I read something that my good friend and their brother wrote, Dele Momodu. He said he was a uh, as brilliant as the Chinese, the Koreans, the Indians put together, why are Igbos denied key positions in Nigeria? If you don't trust them and they say they want to go, why are you then stopping them? When people speak, I, I don't believe in Nigeria, but had I believed, if, if I had any belief in the zoo or the viability of the zoo, these are the sort of people that should be the president of Nigeria because of their policies. It's not where somebody comes, it's their policies. Even the so-called min the, the minions, the wretched Fulani slaves in government houses in the East running for vying for presidency, or vice, I should say. None of them have, has ever said this before. That they, we are going to turn the East into the hub of, of the technological advancement, the Silicon Valley of Africa. No, they can't say it. Yeah, because if they say it, Fulani will, Fulani will bring their cow. Do you understand it now? These are, I don't believe in the zoo. Had I had any belief in the zoo, this is the type of man I would have voted for to become the president of the zoo. It's your policies that matter. It is better for me that, or, or do you think that had previous administrations turned the East into the technological hub that it is, natural by nature, do you think we'll be doing what we're doing? Instead, they're telling us, you are traders. Oh, Igbos, Igbos are good. They're good traders, you know. Oh, people from uh, um, our, our Bibio people, they are good at being houseboy. Those who are in the, in the coastal region, they are good at uh, uh, looking for fish, to dry, smoke fish. <laughs> we were never given our dues at all. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, your policies are the things that matter. And so far, the only person who's ever made any kind of sense to me is Dele Mahmoud. This is how you discuss people. I don't believe in the zoo, but anybody who is interested in the zoo, just tell them in the north. Let them take water and buy sumo. You know sumo, the one who used to pump water from the well to put in your tank, jiffy tank, in your home because the government can't even provide ordinary pipe bond water. Go and put it in Kainji Dam or all those reserves in the north, in Arugungu River or Lake. Pump water. Use it to irrigate the fields. 
go to Argentina and get high grade nutritional grass. Plant it. After six months, you can feel, your cows will be as fat as the as the new Buhari from, from Niger Republic. I can assure you that moving cattle from place to place like a shameless bunch of retards from the medieval period. I feel sorry for you people. That is the only advice I can give to all of you. Stop wasting everybody's time and just tell us whole heart our faces. I want to take your land from you and I'm going to use my cattle to do it. Than all this garbage. We are looking for grass. Move the water. Pharaoh used to do it in, in, in Egypt 3,000 years ago. Move water from... from Kenji has a dam, isn't it? Move the water now from the reserve. Use it. It's called it. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you don't know what is the meaning of irrigation. It's called irrigation. Irrigation. Janja weed. Irrigation. Move pump water from there. Any land you have, uh, some in Bauchi, any is after all you move pipe from 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 Biafra land to the to, to Chad. Crude oil pipe, didn't you? Did you know? Of course you did. Ordinary to move water from Kainji Dam Reserve to, to five kilometers away to irrigate farmland or arable like arable land to plant grass. Go to Argentina and they will give you grass for free. For free, they'll give you grass for free in Argentina. And then you can use it to do whatever thing that you want to do. You go and, and graze your cattle there all you like, all your life. That is entirely up to you. But as for us, we are not giving up. We are not conceding, not one iota, not one inch. So that when the time comes, you will say that I warned you in 11 days time, you think Bender was bad, Isiguata was bad. Wait and see what is going to happen to you. Let me see cattle outside after 11 days. For those of you saying that we are doing this, taking losses, that is what your law says. Your law says you cannot move cattle from place to place. Irrigation, irrigation. Please, people should say this. Anytime you see Jan Jawid anywhere, talking rubbish on Channels TV, you know, Channels is their main outlet. People without shame. If, if journalism is the type being practiced by Channels Television, journalism back work, wretched beast. It is irrigation. Move water and use it to water the land. And then I'm sure Argentina will give you free grass. The, seed, the seedlings is called. You plant it, you get all your grass, and your white fat mama will be there enjoying uh, themselves. They can be having party. Than the disgraceful practice of living in our forests and telling us rubbish every blessed day. We don't want any farm settlements, no full and colonies, nothing whatsoever. Stay where you are. Stay in your land and do whatever you like with it. Not in Biafra land and not in my time, definitely. With that, we have come to the end of our program this very day. Just to warn each and every one of you, in 11 days' time, any cattle we see outside is gone. It's gone and it's gone for your information. You think we are joking? You think we are joking? Uh, try us and see now. Bring your fighter jets and everything. Assemble them together to come and defend people who are breaking the law. What Fulani headsmen are doing is illegal. They are breaking the law and they must be held to account. And with that, we have come to the end of our program this very day. There will be further announcements coming. Very, very important, please. Wherever you are, you continue to pray for our brave men and women of Eastern Security Network. They are doing exceptionally well. If you have not supported them, try and do so. And make sure you are doing so via the appropriate and the right channels, please. And any country without any country we have on this very earth that doesn't have a financial secretary, please endeavor to do so. Make sure that you have one as quickly as possible. Very, very critical. A finance officer, rather. And it has to be a woman, please. It must and should be a woman. We are pleading with you. Thank you very much for listening to us this very evening. And as always, people ask me my religion. Is it Judaism? Is it 
my religion is Biafra. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. And I may follow, so I don't worship any idol. Because God said so via Moshe in the book of Exodus. You will have no other God beside me. It's an edict, biblical edict. I don't worship, and I'm a Pharisee. I don't bow down before any garbage. I worship the Almighty through God, the Lord of hosts of the heavens and the earth. Here is where we worship. Because only that very entity, Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, is our God. From me, from here, with love in my heart for all of you, and very special prayers for ESN, and for the preservation of this holy family of IPOB worldwide from me, from here, good evening.